All right, guys, it's Friday. Welcome back to the Paul Saladino Debunk Show. I mean, welcome back to What the Fitness. Now, many of you will say, Lane, why are you still picking on poor Paul? Well, I would love to stop talking about him, but he keeps talking absolute nonsense and you all keep sharing it. So we're here. Let's see what Paul has to say this week. Oh, the title is Beer is Gonna Give You Man Boobs. Okay, let's see what this says. Is beer giving you man boobs? Maybe. Check this out. A common component of beers is hops. And that hops flower is well known to contain very strong estrogenic compounds. Compounds from plants that mimic estrogen in the human body are called phytoestrogens. And hops contains one of the strongest phytoestrogens known based on scientific experiments. So as I've Which talked about in the past, Paul? drinking alcohol of any kind is not that great for your brain. It thins the neocortex. It's not that great for your gut. It you causes must be an alcoholic gut, then, which leads Paul. to increased endotoxin and inflammation. But drinking beer, especially IPAs, which are very rich in hops, could be giving you even more problems with significant doses of phytoestrogens that are hormone disrupting in your body. In men, this can lead to gynecomastia called man boobs, and in women, Excess estrogens can lead to all sorts of problems, mood swings, menstrual irregularities. I would definitely avoid beer for this reason, and especially hoppy beers like IPAs, unless you want man boobs. I agree with Paul. You should avoid IPAs, but not because of the nonsense that he just said, but because IPAs are disgusting. Go ahead and tell me how much you hate me in the comments. IPAs are disgusting. Why would you drink that when you could drink a wonderful brown ale? or any form of ale, or a nice stout, even a lager, a Hefeweizen, something that doesn't taste like Satan's anus. I'm not worried about the phytoestrogens that are present in incredibly low doses in beer. If we look at the human randomized control trials, where they look at beer intake and its impacts on testosterone and estrogen, what you find is that at high doses, there is a negative effect on testosterone, but that is because alcohol negatively impacts testosterone in high doses, but in moderate doses, like two-ish drinks or three drinks at a sitting, there's no effect on testosterone or estrogen. In fact, some studies show that alcohol acutely increases testosterone by a little bit. It's not gonna boost your testosterone, but in small or moderate doses, alcohol is not going to negatively affect your testosterone, it's not gonna increase your estrogen, and it's not gonna give you man boobs. Even something like soy protein isolate, which is high in phytoestrogens. In the latest meta-analysis, it showed that one serving of soy protein per day did not cause a change in testosterone or estrogen. And this is something that's very concentrated in phytoestrogens. Therefore, as with most things, the dosage makes the poison. But since Paul is a psychiatrist, uh, apparently he did not take toxicology class. So what I would recommend, as I always have, is stop listening to people like Paul. One of the reasons I call people like Paul out is I got an email from somebody who works in a treatment facility for anorexia and eating disorders. He was thanking me for my work and said that they had a girl who they had just gotten her to start eating some carbs and eating small amounts of oatmeal. And this girl saw one of Paul Saladino's videos about how oatmeal is bad for you and she immediately cut out the oatmeal. Did you know that eating disorders have the highest mortality rate of any mental health disorder, including depression? This bad information is not just bad information kills people. Anorexics, people who have food anxiety, when they see shit like this, it shuts them down. So honestly, I don't feel bad at all for calling this shit out. Because quite frankly, even though he's not intending to, I'm sure it's not Paul's intention to harm people, he is harming people. I hope over time he will actually start reading scientific literature. For example, his oatmeal video talks about anti-nutrients in oatmeal which are almost completely destroyed during the cooking process. The amount that's left over after cooking is so low, it would never cause any negative effects. Oh, by the way, you know what's worse for anti-nutrition and vitamins and minerals than having something high in phytates? Being anorexic because you're so scared to eat anything. 
Paul knows this. He has been told this. He has been presented research directly showing this when it comes to things like antinutrients and phytates and oatmeal. And yet he still puts out this content. Why? Because his narrative and selling his crappy supplement line is more important to him than actually having correct information. Or maybe he's so, I don't know, oblivious that he doesn't know this. So he's either completely ignorant or he's aware and doesn't care. You get to pick.